Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's draft time. We're gonna be taking 10 players under the age of 30 followed by 10 players over the age of 30. So if you're 30 right on the dot, then sucks to be you, I guess. You won't be on the Stanley Cup winning team, which is whatever team I land on right now. Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Don't even think about touching my lines. Jabroni player morale, we will turn that off. Obviously we want fantasy draft on. This seems right. I've basically just memorized. You could turn all these words off. I would know that it's these three that need to be on. <laughs> I say we get pick number 10. Pick number 10. Let's see how wrong I am right now. The Anaheim Ducks get pick number two. Well then, I believe we're going to have a very solid selection here, but who? McDavid is gone at 96 overall. Do I take McCarr or do I take Matthews? Or do I take Dreisaitl? Or do I take Nate Mack? <laughs> They're all under 30. So is Kucherov and Pasta, but I think it's gotta be between these two, and why do I feel like when I've taken Makar in the past, it hasn't worked out? He is making nine, whereas Matthews is making 11-6. Dreisaitl's only making 8-5. Nate Mack drafted him recently, so I'm gonna have to pass up on that one. Fine, I'll go with Matthews. And there is only one player on this front page who is under the age of 30, and that is Couturier. What about goalies? Can I take a goalie early on here? I could. You see what I see. 27, 89 overall, 5 million. Yes. Although I do feel historically he hasn't simulated very well for me. So I'm hoping that this is going to be a new you see what I see, and he does phenomenal. Jake Gensel, we could have two snipers on the first line, that's not a big deal. Six million bucks, 88 overall, you will be playing with Austin. I really do wanna take one of these guys, but 9.5 and 9.25, I don't know if I can justify that. All right, you know what, fine. I'm gonna go with Seth Jones because he's a right-handed defender, and you know, the 250K isn't that big of a difference. So let's go with Jones. Chandler's contract is very good, but I feel like I take him all the time, so. I'm having trouble convincing myself to draft him. Pesci, also right-handed, but, I mean, he can just play on the second pair. Yeah, you know what? Let's go for it. Four million dollars. I'm not saying no. And I'm gonna take Tom Wilson, or should I say Tim Winston, just because he is Tom Wilson. And I'm a Capitals fan, so I am one of very few people that enjoy him, <laughs> him in the NHL. You hate him until he's on your team. Brandon Montour. Another right-handed defenseman, which sucks. We could just totally stack up on the right side. In fact, you know what? I will do that. I am starting to really wish that I took Darnell Nurse, though. But too late. Finally, a left-handed defender. 3.1 million. And he is under the age of 30. So there you go. Ryan Graves. Vincent Trocek. 5.6. What is with all these contracts? He's got 87 face-offs, though. So I will be selecting him. I'm gonna try moneyballing this thing again and it is gonna backfire. This will be our last player under the age of 30 before we flip the switch and start drafting from the other half, but Barabanov, he's just made so many appearances. I feel like he's never simmed well for me though, which is why I will instead be drafting the $1.7 million man in Ryan Hartman. We do need a left winger. They do have to be over the age of 30. And, I mean, Alex Kalorn. I'm going for the dub this time. Like, I'm not drafting because, oh, I feel like I've had them before. Even though I literally did that with our first pick, but it was still Matthews, you know? So, yeah, I'm going for it. Alex Kalorn, join the team. My primary concern at the moment is salary cap because we only have just over $20 million to sign the second half of our team. But David Krejci is going to make that a little bit easier. He's been on the team many times before, and he is showing up again. Let's go, Phil. Physicality, let's throw the body around out there. Alexiak would have been nice, but unfortunately, he is 29, so that is a no-go. Martin. Shen is right-handed. Oh, come on, what's with all these right-handed defensemen? Delorier hasn't let me down. He's done well. He's killed penalties, gotten short-handed goals. I will select him again. He's over the age of 30 making 800k. We're gonna have quite a bit of cap space left, actually, so I can start being a little less picky with who I'm drafting. Show me the money. Who's got good draws? 91. Jordan Stull, six million dollars. Can we afford him? Not really, but we're gonna make it work. Three million bucks for an 82 overall defenseman. I would have taken Jensen, but he's right-handed, so Cole is next on the list. So now we have eight million to sign two forwards and a goalie. 
Easy peasy. Ryan Reeves, welcome to the squad. Or ah, uh, three point two. I don't know if I can if I can do that. We could take Matt Martin though. Let's check out his physicality. Oh my word! And he play a sixty five discipline like they all do. Yep. Oh, Lucic actually has 70. He is 77 overall for 1.5, which is pretty solid. All right, Martin, let's go. You really thought I wasn't going to take Ryan Reeves? That's crazy. He's going to be our fourth line right winger. 5.4 million to get a goalie. It doesn't look like there's anybody who sort of fits right in. That would be perfect for that. But we do have some options here. I could take the Smith. I could take Jones. Rubauer is a no-go. Bernier is available. Craig... Didn't sim too well for me last time, unfortunately, so I'm going to pass. DeSmith and Jones are both hybrids. They both have four star for every category. They both glove left. I actually don't know what to do here. Let's try Jones. Two million dollars, 82 overall backup. I'll see how he sims because, again, I feel like I've had DeSmith before. And for some reason, his numbers weren't that great. But I could be blurring all kinds of lines here. I don't know. Maybe he was phenomenal. So if that's the case, I am very sorry for the false accusations, Casey. But anyway. Oh, we also got Brayden Holpe. Yankowski. I might have to edit our lines here. Let's see. And by edit our lines, I mean send down players that I didn't draft. And then best lines it. Because the game knows best, apparently. They'll give you all dash threes, and it'll be better than the all plus fives that I put together. Sim up to the regular season. I already sent down Yankowski and some other 60 overall player that was for some reason in the NHL. What do we have here? The grand unveiling. That chemistry is gas. We have a plus three, plus one, plus one, and then a zero. Which I find slightly offensive. I think this should be a plus one. I do question, however... Why Stull is not in the middle. I'm going to make that move and that move only. For the simple reason that he has 91 face-offs. So like, yeah. Oh, you don't like to see that. Um, okay, you do like to see that, however. Seth Jones and Ryan Graves get a plus one and then Pesci and Giordano does as well. I've had enough of you, NHL 23. Enough of your little games. I will edit the lines if I want to. So as a matter of fact... Oh, I thought I moved it back. No, I didn't. He's staying there. Saros is in net. And then we have Marty backing him up. I don't know what's going on in the HL. There's Holpe. He's only 80 overall now. Wowzers. All right, so I say that we make it into the playoffs with a grand total of 44 wins. I will say that Matthews has the most points with... 88. Without further ado, let's get this season simulation started. Pretty solid start so far. And naturally, because I said anything about us doing good, we take an L. We definitely are on a pretty good pace, however. Battling for first in the division at the moment. So that is very impressive. The battle is very close. Two points separate. Actually, it's only like five points that separate the top... I think that was five teams? Three losses in a... Four losses in a row. Maybe even more, actually, because I wasn't really paying attention in January. If I'm gonna be honest. Can we stop? Grab some more dubs before the trade deadline, or you're all cut. There we go. We got some in there. I'll take a shootout loss. It's a point. Third in the division. Yeah, look how close our division is. I guess the other divisions are pretty close as well, but ours definitely seems to be a lot more intense. And we got a nice little 5-3 win against the Montreal Canadiens the day before the deadline. Let's find out who's available, although I will not be making any trades. We got Patrick Kane, 92 overall. Tarasenko, who? We also got Freddie Anderson, Kreider, Flurry. Wow, this is a big trade deadline. There's a lot of top tier talent available. Minnesota made a trade. Hyman and Nudavara in exchange for a second, a third, Stranges, and a third. Wow, a lot of draft picks involved in that one. I, however, will be seeing myself out. Thank you for showing me who's available, but I'm simply not interested. There you go. Philly acquires uh, those guys and a second in exchange for Kreider, Drewen, Dumlin, and Johnson. Holy smokes. And 80 overall Brett Kulak is being put on waivers. I'm not going to claim him, but... Interesting. I know it's a lot to ask, but I need a big post-trade deadline from the lads. There we go. One and one. 9-8-W over... That is a very impressive game. I think it was Seattle and LA that had a 9-8 game. All right, come on. 40 wins. If we win out the last four, I believe... No, we didn't. But anyway, we came very close. We got 43 dubs, and we did make the playoffs. The Calgary Flames, which, I mean, we beat them 6-2 and 9-8. 
Also lost to them here for- we played them a lot. I guess divisional things, in it. So they ended up finishing with 97 points, and we had 95. So the top three in this division, very close, but ended up kind of pulling away from the rest of the crowd. The Pity Pens go on to win the President's Trophy with a squad that includes Ehlers, Hints, and Wheeler. Nice. Farabee, Johansson, and Hall, Jason Dickinson, Deneau. They have a good team. Aiden Hill and Peterson and Nett. Yossi! Playing with Dobson. Isn't Yossi right-handed or am I crazy? Yep, I'm crazy, but you guys already knew that. We ended up finishing 10th in the entire league, which is a respectable finish nonetheless. Top 16 teams qualified. Matthews put up 95 points and we got 80 from Gensel. 55 goals, you know, that might do it. There's a chance. Tom Wilson had 73 points, 58 pims, which is not really that dramatic compared to the rest of the ones I see here. 64 points from David, what a legend. And we also got 56 from Phil. Saros didn't do so hot. He had a 904, 289, three shutouts on the year. And Jones also, no. That's not it. Seth Jones, however, did put up 41 points and was a plus 11, so I am pleasantly surprised by your performance. Matthews finished third in the league with 95 points, and it looks like he did get the Rocket Richard. Quite convincingly. He also had nine game-winning goals, so did Rantanen. Marchi had eight. Rasmussen had one face-off taken, and he took a dub, so 100%. <laughs> Drew, Bergeron, Crosby, Horvat, yeah, I guess. Tanner, I gotta start drafting this guy, you know? He scraps a lot. 20. Felino had 11. I almost drafted him. We have Delorier here with seven. Add a boy. Reeves with four. Alexiak ended up having four Tillies. Tage Thompson, 186 hits, leads the league. And then we've got Stone with 180. Ehlers had 10 game winning goals. And then there is a bunch of players that had nine, including Matthews, as I mentioned. It's playoff time. The Calgary Flames. I'm calling a no sweep in the first round. Let's find out. <laughs> I feel like I regret this almost every time. We're not off to a good start. All right. Okay. Okay. Nice. We lost the first game and then came back and absolutely dummied them. I'm also calling a no sweep second round, even though they did in fact sweep their first round opponent. Come on. Oh yeah, we took... Nice! Best of three. Can we get the game advantage in the best of three? No, we cannot. We are one game away from being deleted. Okay, so we're out shooting them incredibly, but Soros can't save a beach ball. You know, why can't I step in like the goalie be a pro? And they got a shorthanded goal. What are we doing? Ekholm scores. I think it's basically done. Never mind. Matthew's got a power play. Okay, well, I spoke maybe just a little too soon. Third period, and this is just to push a game seven. Even if we win this, we aren't through yet. We have to beat Colorado one more time. Power play that we don't capitalize on. However, a penalty that we do kill off. Let's go! Matthews buries another one. Can we do it? Hold them off. Five minutes to go, and we have a game seven. The shots are outrageous. Let's go, Vinny! There's your three stars of the game. All centermen. Game seven to advance to the Western Conference Finals. It's going to be against either the Coyotes or the Dallas Stars. They are also in a game seven. Let's simulate it and hope that we take a big old dub. That's a great way to start, Jakey. It just is. one nothing. The shots are slightly in our favor, but there's not a whole lot of shots going on in general. I think they had a power play there for a second. I wasn't fully paying attention. But if they did, we killed it off. Another 5-on-4, possibly, for Colorado. An extended one? What did we do? Did we get an ejection or something? Halfway through the game, we give up another power play. But we did manage to kill it off yet again. Our PK is probably nuts, by the way. I'm kind of curious. I want to go look at the team standings after this to see which team had the highest PK percentage. Because we have some guys that can win draws. And on the PK, that is crucial. Let's go, Kalorn! Tie game! We're being outshot, but not too dramatically. Never mind, they kind of pulled away big time there. As I was saying that, one goal for the Anaheim Ducks. And we're in. Stop giving them power plays! What are we doing? All right, it comes down to golden goal. The mighty Ducks of Anaheim and the Colorado Avalanche. The shots, we won't look at that right now. But what we will look at is our team scoring right now. I don't, I, okay. Just another day at the office, you know, it just is what it is. It was the Dallas Stars. I'm once again going to call a no sweep. First four games. Oh, I love it. So if it is going to be, it almost was. I told you I drafted this team to be a champion and we are in the Stanley Cup Finals. 
against, who cares? The Toronto Maple Leafs will be our opponent. We both have, never mind, we both have 12 wins, obviously, because you need 12 wins to get here. But they only have four losses, whereas we have five. I'm calling a no, no sweep again. First four games, we'll just breeze past them. It is currently 1-1. Nice. Oh my word! Matthews might be putting in some work against his form- I'm just gonna sim past this first period. Okay, okay, that's not that bad. Second period, 5-3. We'll just move on to the next game. 6-3. Haha, <laughs> congrats, you're sick. But anyway, uh, you're still gonna lose. We need to win one of the next two games in order to lift that Stanley Cup. Let's do it. Let's do it now! Don't wait for game 7, alright? <laughs> Please do not do that. Power play for the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Toronto kills it off though, and we will have a scoreless first period. Second period is underway. Power play for Toronto. And they score on it! Norris will bury one on Soros to give the TML the 1-0 lead. Halfway through this game, that lead remains. And we need to get going here. If we go down into the- if we go into the third down by one, I just can't speak. Come on, Anaheim. Just don't get shut out, you know? We can lose and go to game seven, fine. But, don't get shut out. That's gonna be the ultimate confidence booster that they need for that game seven. We had a power play, we didn't capitalize, and they shut us out. Katahat and Saros, both in the top three stars. Norris, the only goal of the game, so obviously. Here it is, game seven, against the Toronto Maple Leafs for the Stanley Cup. I'm losing my voice, I can feel it. I feel like, shouldn't my voice be used to this by now? You would think so, right? But no, it's not. We have zero shots, and we're five minutes into this game. That's an issue. Oh no. Tippett scores, makes it a 2-0 game for Toronto after the first period. I don't like this one bit. Come on, Anaheim. Dig deep here. Matthews or Krejci. We take that as well. It is now a one-goal game. We're kind of bringing the shots back here, which is nice, I guess. We got a bit of a momentum shift. That guy deserves the con Smythe if we take a dub here. Guaranteed, he won't get it. But he should. This can't be real. Stop giving them power plays, guys. It's game seven of the Stanley Cup Finals. Unless they somehow get a breakaway, knock it off. Still tied here, 2-2. Two, two. Shots are literally deadlocked at 30. We're gonna have to jump in. We're gonna have to jump in. Get me in there. There's something about seeing Marchand in a Toronto Maple Leafs jersey that is oddly satisfying. Come on, lads, ducks fly together or something like that. So hopefully we do, in fact, fly together on our way to a Stanley Cup. Jones gets it behind the net. Nice, he managed to get past whoever that was. Headmans it to Hartman, who has it, stops. Goes for a pass in front of the net, he still has it. Finds Trocek, Jones keeps it in. He's walking in, Jones! He just missed the net. That was it, no, still! We're gonna need overtime for this one. This is intense. Shots are 34-34. We are out hitting them, time on attack. The exact same, their passing's a little bit better. Faceoffs won pretty even. We have taken double the amount of penalty minutes. No. Yes. <laughs> That's huge. Matthews carries it up the ice. He gets angled off there. Spins back. Finds Wilson in the middle. How legendary would it be if Tom Wilson scored that goal? That was a brutal hit. He just got Beybladed. And he's staying... That was Gensel too, I think. And now we take a puck to the mouth? I would have been very upset if that's how it ended. Matthews is in. He gets it poked. Tries to take a shot, but they are not letting him have that. Probably a good idea. Taves! With a burst of speed. Stops. No. No! No! I don't... I can't speak. I thought that was game. If he got that pass through, which he did, I just assumed it was over. But somehow, because of that man right there, we are still alive. Nice hit. Love it. Jonathan Taves. Try to come in over the line, and he regrets it. Walk in. Krejci! Imagine the scene! That would have been- that's the hat trick for him, right? If he got it? We're setting up here. Kalorn has it, and that will be taken right from him. Here come the Toronto Maple Leafs. Find Spurgeon, download to Goudreau, who gets knocked off the puck. Tippett tries to tuck it, but to no avail. Battling behind the net. Stull comes in to help out Pesci. And the Ducks are headed back the other way now. Spins off. Finds Giordano. 
who is streaking up on the wing here. Gets stepped up on as soon as he enters the zone. And Toronto headed right back the other way now. Goudreau finds Data, who will be robbed by You See What I See. Sprong finds Donato, another save from Saros. I don't like this. Not one bit. We have to get it out of our zone. Stall headmans it to Trocek. Over to Hartman. I like it. Oh, that was a brutal shot. Not good at all. Cole has it. Tries to go to Hartman. And he somehow still comes out with it. Montour with it. Good passing. Delorier. It's got to be Delorier. It's not. It's not Delorier. Game 7 Stanley Cup in Toronto. I don't even want to imagine what those tickets are being sold for. Why is Matt Martin out there? <laughs> oh, never mind. Reeves <laughs> gets a shot. But that will be saved by Kata. Matthews. Nice pass. And Gensel rips one. But somehow Hart puts that in the mitt. We might see a second overtime here. It's leaning that way. Seven seconds. Potentially one more chance. No, Matthews decided he wasn't feeling it, I guess. We're all tied after 80 minutes of playing time. Let's see if we'll be finished before... Well, yeah, we will be. And it's Brad Marchand, of all people. I shouldn't have complimented him in that jersey. I did this to myself. Wow, th this feeling sucks, and this is a video game. I can't even imagine actually losing the Stanley Cup like that. The San Diego Gulls took home the Calder. I, I don't even know. They are our AHL team. I thought so. We could have won both. We were so close. Matthews had 29 points in 24 games. We got 21 from Tim Winston, 18 from Gensel. Krejci had 17, 16 from Hartman and Trocek. How'd the goalies do? Or goalie. 924. Saros played phenomenal. Seth Jones, 10 points. That's okay. Montour, 9. Pesci, 8. Katahat, 918, 247. 925 from Bobrovsky, and we put them out. So, clearly, he was doing a great job, and somehow we still prevailed. Spurgeon, the Conn Smythe winner, point a game. He had 23 points in 23 games. Aaron Ekblad had 20. Charlie McAvoy with 13 in 19 games. Jack Eichel, 27 points in 17 games. 24 from Robertson. Yeah, so clearly these two were gelling together. Norris had 21. Wilson with 21, so he's up there. Marchie, 19. Brutal. Let's go through the awards here real quick. And individual, Drysaddle gets the art and the heart. Norris goes to Hedman, passed it with the Lady Bing. Uh, Pelletier gets the Calder. Sorry, probably butchered that. Jared Spurgeon with the Conn Smythe. Allmark gets the Vesna. Katahat with the Jennings. Taves with the Masterton. Trojanovic gets the Jack Adams. Kopitar with the Selkie. Drysaddle takes home the Ted Lindsay. And Matthews gets the Rocket Richard. So at least we got something. Here is your playoff tree. A very disappointing Game 7 Stanley Cup Final loss. But it do be like that sometimes. Well, thank you so much for the video suggestion. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. I will see you soon.